our modern engines already broken in from the factory? I'm Lake, the Motor Wheel Geek, and we're gonna find out. This is my daughter's 2023 Toyota Corolla. In a previous video, we did an oil change within the first 1,000 miles to get rid of the break-in debris created during new engine break-in. But people commented and asked, well, aren't modern engines already broken in? Was that a complete waste of time and money and effort? Well, it's a great question. So let's actually unpack and explore that question just for a minute. This car was built in Japan. And if you go to Toyota's website, you can find out that there's a car factory and an engine factory. So we don't know, because I've never been to Japan. I've never been to the Toyota engine factory. I don't know if they break in those engines once they finish assemble them and then deliver them to the car factory to be put in the car. I, I don't know. I don't like speculation. I like science. And we can actually discern the answer without going to Toyota, without finding out from them whether or not the engine is actually broken in or not. What we can do is take a used oil sample from this engine at this second oil change and then look at the trend analysis to tell us whether or not that engine is breaking in or not. Because if it's already been broken in, it'll be even the same. It won't change. The wear rate will not change. If the engine is breaking in, then the wear rate will change. We've seen that in the previous video that when you build a brand new engine, everything has to break in. Specifically, the piston rings and the cylinder walls are mating together. It's the number one source of friction in any engine is the piston ring rubbing against the cylinder wall, and as they break in, it will generate a lot of wear debris of whatever that piston ring and cylinder board material is. So we can look at that, and that's how we will know the answer. Again, we don't have to speculate. We can use science to get the answer. You see, I'm not a professional YouTuber. This is not what I do for a real job. Now, I am a tribologist. That means I study the science of friction, wear, and lubrication, specifically in internal combustion engines. My name is Lake Speed Jr. I am a certified lubrication specialist and oil monitoring analyst. In addition to my dad being a NASCAR veteran and world karting champion, I've also had the privilege of being able to work for and with companies like Joe Gibbs Racing, General Motors, Ford, Dodge, Wix, Lubrizol, Afton Chemical, Chevron Phillips, competition cams, and Total Seal Piston Rings, which is what my day job is. Now, I make these videos because as a tribologist, what I see on the internet is a ton of speculation and not a lot of science. People use scientific words, but they're speculating on what their opinions are. And as W. Edwards Deming, the father of modern statistics once said, without data, you're just another person with an opinion. So let's throw away those opinions and let's get to the science and show you some data on whether or not modern engines are actually broken in. So we've taken our sample. Next thing we're gonna do, we're gonna drop it in the mail. In about a week, we'll have the results. But through the magic of editing, you get them now. And here are those results. It is super clear this engine was not broken in at the factory. And we can say that with confidence because we can see the iron, the aluminum, the copper. Those key wear metals have all reduced despite that longer drain interval. So the wear rate is what actually changed. If the engine had been broken in, then the wear rate would have been the same. What we see is a gigantic change in the wear rate, where that initial fill was at 91 parts per million of wear metals per 1,000 miles. We're now down to nine parts per million wear metals per 1,000 miles. And the big change on that is the copper. The copper was higher on that first sample, you know, from 40, down to eight parts per million, huge change. We also see the iron go from 13 parts per million down to eight. We also saw the aluminum go from 13 parts per million down to 
four. So that means those cylinders, those pistons, everything is breaking in. So I guarantee you the next sample, it won't be that much different than this one because that engine was breaking in during that first 500 miles or so. So just like my Porsche engine, we saw those wear metals go down early and then stabilize. So there it is. It's the science that just showed the engine wasn't broken in at the factory because if the engine was already broken in, the wear rate would have been level, but the wear rate was not level, dramatically so not level, which is why we did the early oil change and this early oil change. This is why we didn't follow the owner's manual and go 10,000 miles. And it's not because I'm smarter than Toyota, it's because we have different objectives. Because that's the other question we want to answer here. Hey, was the engine broken in the factory? Now we know the engine wasn't broken in the factory. But if it wasn't broken in the factory, then why didn't it have braking oil in it? like they used to put in them, you know, 30 years ago. Well, the simple answer is two reasons. Number one reason is people lease cars today as opposed to buying cars. So back in the early 90s, the majority of cars were sold. They weren't leased. But as time has moved forward, more people are leasing cars, not buying cars. And when people lease cars, they tend not to do as much maintenance. The car manufacturers had these vehicles with braking oil, which was low detergent, low dispersant, not capable of going a long drain interval. If someone leased that car, didn't do that service, it would sludge the engine and cause lots of problems. If they had a problem because the engine was sludging up, still under warranty, still under the lease, who had to fix it? The OEM. So it was the OEM's best interest to get rid of the braking oil because people that had leases on cars, they didn't do the correct maintenance on the cars. I think everybody can understand that, can't we? Right. Well, what's the other piece? I said there was two. The second one are the EPA, they call them CAFE fuel economy requirements. The CAFE, the EPA doesn't listen to what Ford, GM, or Toyota or anybody else tells them what the fuel mileage is. What they do is they show up on dealerships unannounced and they buy cars and they take those cars and then they go test them. Well, if I have a high zinc, low detergent, non-friction modified braking oil in my car, I'm going to get less fuel economy than if I have a highly friction modified, full synthetic, that zero WA oil is going to give you better fuel economy. So the real reason braking oil doesn't exist in modern cars from the OEMs anymore is simply because they needed to protect their warranty liability because people who lease cars don't do maintenance correctly. That's why they also give you free oil changes, right? To make sure they maintain that vehicle so it doesn't have problems, right? That's in their own best interest, not yours. It actually works for both of us, actually. Uh, you get a free oil change and you get better reliability of your car. So that's why those oil changes are packaged as part of this. But the second reason is fuel economy. When they can put in a lower viscosity synthetic oil with better friction modifiers, they can get better fuel economy. And that helps them with CAFE. That helps them avoid major fines. So in both cases, you can actually distill it down a little bit more. There's a financial incentive for the OEM to not use braking oil, to use a lower viscosity synthetic oil with friction modifiers. This is going to give them better fuel economy so they get better CAFE numbers. They can then also go longer drain intervals. They can protect that engine under warranty by doing that. But that's only protecting them from the sludge. That's not actually, as we see, it's not actually what's best for the engine is going 10,000 miles, even on that really good oil. The numbers prove it out. It's the science shows, use the good synthetic oil, just change it a little more frequently and you get less wear in your engine. Yeah, again, this isn't my opinion. You watched the video, you've seen the results. It's science, not speculation, which is what we do here on this channel. And hopefully you enjoyed this video. If you did, make sure you hit the subscribe button so you can watch more videos like this. Hey, and share it with your friends if you think they might enjoy it as well.